Justin Royland, welcome to the Game Informer Show. Thanks for having me. How's How it going, man? I'm good. Yeah? I'm just tired. Yeah, I'm tired. I've been <clears throat> I've been um like not sleeping well, so I'm like I'm like exhausted, but Well, you've got a game coming out on Friday and then is Rick and Morty picking up too, so you got a lot going on right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're headlong into production and it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, well, let's talk about uh, Trover and Squanch specifically. Um, I would love to know why you decided to found a video game studio. You know, where did you get the confidence to decide to do video games? <laughs> it wasn't even so much confidence as it was um, truly it was the invention of VR, I think, is what sort of made me um, even think to to move in this direction. You know, I, like I, I'm a lifelong gamer, so I've got all this video game you know, like thousands and thousands of hours of, of just playing and, and consuming video games just stored away in my subconscious. So it's like when I when we started the studio, I was like, I basically what what kicked it off was uh, the DK one was sort of like, you know, interesting, you know, the Oculus DK one. I was like, this is amazing. The DK two was really when it started to like ideas started to go into my brain. And I started writing down in my notebook, like basically both intellectual property, like characters, worlds, stories, but also like mechanics, like like actual VR. Because this was the this was the wild west of VR. It was like, okay, how do you how do you locomote? How do you what are really interesting creative ways to move around in a world in VR when you have the limitation of not being able to actually just move freely, you know? All these like questions that have been dealt with quite extensively up, uh, you know, at, at at this point. But um but all that stuff really excited me. This is like, you know, the Wild West, New Frontier and so I was obsessed with it. And then I started developing on paper several different video game ideas based on room scale VR. I got a hold of uh, one of the early Vive dev kits way before it was out. <clears throat> so I had that. I had a good like eight months, maybe more of, of of like you know just playing with that thing before it had been released. And uh, and and that led me to like get serious. Like I want to make a I want to make a game. Like that was my goal. I want to make a video game in VR. And so that was kind of the that was the the guiding light. And then it was just okay. What do I got to do? I gotta I gotta find a producer. That's number one, right? I need I need someone who's made a video game before. Made you know ideally many. Yeah. Ship them. You know knows how to do it. And so um, I met with uh, Ophir Lupu over at UTA, who's my video game agent, and he basically was my Sherpa guiding me into the world of, you know, video game. He could tell right away that I wasn't just the typical actor or writer or whoever, you know, whatever, who, who wants to make a game. I actually, like, I knew a lot about game design. I was surprising myself. I was like, oh, I actually in, inadvertently picked up a lot of, you know, things over the years. Um, and so he he took me seriously and and thank God because yeah like you know looking back that was like a little over three years ago, and here we are with 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 our first game which is kind of insane how fast it all kind of came together. But anyways, uh, through him I met Tanya Watson, my partner at Squanch Games, and Tanya and that that was when it really kind of like kicked off. It was like okay this is like just just prior to meeting Tanya and partnering with her, I was pitching a game at G or at uh, E3 to everybody that would listen. And pitched it to Sony by complete accident because it was a room scale. Oh, go ahead. Well, were you setting up meetings at E3? Because E3 is usually a place to like show off games. Yeah, no, I was setting up meetings through okay. ETA. I was like meeting with whoever would listen, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but it was very much a room scale VR game pitch. And again, this is the days prior to launch. Like this is before, you know, the Vive is available, re- you know, on like retail shelves or just even online. I mean, this is yeah. like. And no PSVR one knows. wasn't even a thing at that point, right? It hadn't been announced yet, I imagine? No, it was announced, but okay. it was... I think it was announced. I'm pretty sure people knew. Yeah, no, people knew, because I think that the... What were they calling the, the PSVR? They were calling it, like, the Morpheus or something. That sounds they, right. It's been a while. Yeah. I don't remember the code name now. Yeah, they were showing that off at Comic-Con, so that was out, or that was... I, I, although it's all a big blur, but yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that it was, it was at least people knew about it. I know for sure developer... I think... For sure, people knew about it because yeah, yeah. this was like long after I'd had a vibe for a little while, and I was showing everyone I could get to come over. You know what I mean? I was like, "Come over and play this; it's gonna blow your mind." But um, so I developed this game for Room Scale, and then I'm pitching it, and then Sony, I pitch it to Sony. I pitch it to Adam Boys actually back when he was still with Sony. He grabbed me and he's like, "Pitch me your game." So I pitch it to him, and he flips out. He loves it. 
so then I meet um uh God, why am I blanking? John um I know his name, Jesus Christ. And John I John Drake. Just, thank you, John oh, okay, Drake. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. Lord. Anyway, so I, I Thank I you, mysterious John voice. Drake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John Drake, the most memorable name. Uh it really is. But no, so I pitch it I pitch it to John and his team with Adam and like they fucking love it, but it's a room scale VR game, right? Anyway, so whatever, I'm getting in the weeds, but the, the point is I, I I was I think VR is what really got me going and, and, and got me like, you know, realizing this this crazy path of making video games. But then it wasn't until about halfway through development of Trover and having staffed up a game studio with amazing people that I love that I realized, oh, we could just make video games too. Like, it doesn't just have to be, like, because I never in a million years ever thought to myself, like, oh, I can make a video game. It just seemed like such a distant, you know, star, like, to, to try to reach for. It was like a, this weird other medium I didn't understand. And, but, but then, you know, VR was sort of this gateway drug that, that led to, you know, me now having a studio with amazing people. And now we're like, and, and that's, why we, that's why halfway through Trover, we realized, well, let's see how this plays on a TV and not in VR at all. And then we did the port, we did like the prototyping, you know, to sort of like, quote unquote, port it to just the TV. And that was like, uh, just sort of this insane, like, emo like epiphany moment of like, this game is, this game is fucking weird on the TV in a good way. Like really, in my opinion, like I, I played it more on the TV once we got it working on the TV than I did in VR. Um, just because it's this weird, like first person, third person, like co-op with yourself adventure thing, you know? Yeah. Like a fourth a fourth person game i don't even know like if there's a i've never seen it before I I, yeah. I I don't know if it's been done actually quite the way we have but um but it was this happy accident you know because we started in vr and then we ported it and it was and so um so yeah but anyways but yeah so it was this this sort of weird journey this kind of unexpected journey that led me to you know having this amazing team and 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 a studio and 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 all these great ideas and all these things that we plan to do that are not just VR, but like, you know, just games in general, yeah. which is really cool. So you no longer feel beholden to VR. Like you guys don't consider yourselves like a VR dev at this point. No, but we love VR. Like we're, we're a studio that's incredibly excited and interested in like, you know, all these emerging technologies, AR, VR. Like, I mean, that's what got me, that's what got my foot in the door, right? That's what got me excited about all this to begin with. So, um, we definitely are super inter interested in, in exploring and continuing to work in those mediums. But, but we, I think the epiphany I had much later than everyone else was like, Oh, we could make, we could just make a game. Like, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be in VR. Like we could yeah. just, you know what I mean? And then all these, all these other game ideas start flooding into my brain, you know, like, like a door, a new door is open and it's like all this other shit starts coming yeah. in. So yeah, it's, it, it's been, it's been a really cool, fun, interesting like journey for sure. Are you guys, have you played around with Quest at all yet? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I've been playing, I've been playing with it quite a bit. It's, it's kind of the holy grail, um, you know, in regards to, like, like back when I first got, like, the room, like, the very first room scale VR experience, it was like, oh, this would be so amazing if it was untethered. Yeah. Like that, you know, obviously. You want six degrees on all of your you know, you, you don't want three degrees. I mean, whatever, three degrees is cool, but it's like, come on, like we want to move into the future. And so, yeah, this is definitely, the quest is really, really exciting. It's exciting. I, I'm, I hope, I hope that they sell a lot of them, you know, I hope yeah. the, I hope that there's a, there's a high install base, bring it, bring in a bunch of good devs, you know, it's this weird sort of like, you know, like a catch 22 thing. You, you, you need, you need a high install base in order to attract the big triple A developers and but the the triple a developers sort of don't want to i don't know you they know don't want to I mean? work with a small install base yeah for sure it's like oh we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make a a, a 30 million dollar game and and sell it to a hundred thousand people no i don't think that's gonna yeah. that doesn't make good business sense you know sure uh so uh justin what is what's your workload right now you got a game coming out on friday like is it just absolutely insane yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, right now it's, <clears throat> it's all marketing stuff, you know, press stuff. And then we've got, um, post launch support stuff, you know, for Trover we're, we're doing DLC stuff for oh, the game. Cool. It's, yeah. It's basically, it's like, it's really cool. It's free. Um, and it sort of, it's continued adventures of, of you and Trover. It's sort of a parallel reality Well, whatever. I mean, you, it's really cool. It's this, it's an interesting, um, 
just us taking all this world building stuff that we had had all the you know what is this place what is who is trover where does he work all that kind of stuff and realizing it a little bit more in another um sort of separate storyline that that we're going to kind of continually update yeah um post release so so anyone that buys the game will get that stuff for free That's cool. um and again it's dual dual um you know you could play it in vr or on the tv um, yeah. all that stuff but uh but yeah um the video game stuff, uh, two TV shows. I got a show called Solar Opposites. Yeah, uh, and then I was that, watching. I was watching Star versus the Forces of Evil, and like uh, you're you're in there too. And then like you're just showing up all over the place. Yeah, those those are like quick. Those are just like you know going into like my, like I'm friends with Darren, so she was like, "Hey, will you do a voice?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So that those are quick, like you know, like couple hours, or yeah. whatever. Um, but um, but pa- yeah, pass along uh, to her by the way that I think that show is fantastic and underrated. I, I will tell her that she she needs to hear it. She should hear that more. I mean, it's fucking it's an incredible show. She's gonna do just fine though. She's one of the yeah. most talented people. Oh my god. Yeah, sorry to sidetrack you. I was no, just, okay. it, it just totally caught me off guard. I was like, is that Justin? Is he a magical broom right now? Isn't he like <laughs> yeah, doing my, a million things? My my voice is is it's it's I have like like four different voices I can do. So it's pretty it's pretty easy to, <laughs> to detect me now if if you hear it. No, it's always fun. Um, so let's talk about Trover a little bit. Um, you know, we're not going to go into spoilers or anything, but I mean, where did that game come from? Was that in that notebook when you first played Oculus, where you kind of writing down ideas for Trover, or did it come from somewhere else? Yeah. So I feel I, I this is not an exaggeration. When I when I got the um, the Vive Dev Kit, I filled about eight sketchbooks, like literally, like big thick sketchbooks. It was sort of between. It was probably probably eighty percent VR ideas and then twenty percent like solar opposites and other and other stuff <clears throat> like Rick and Morty stuff like just a bunch of stuff but but the VR stuff was the was the major like just stuff the outpour of, of, of creativity was all mostly VR game design stuff so Trover was <clears throat> started as a room sk- like an early early version of it was you know a completely different game I probably shouldn't pitch because we might do it someday but ultimately <clears throat> there was a character in the game. That was an eyehole monster. This this little creature that has these other smaller creatures plugged into his eyes, and the idea was that it would be an enemy. Really, it was going to be an enemy type that you would see, and based off the color of the the eyehole monsters, that would give the player an indication as to what sort of damage it could do to you, like what kind of weapon it was wielding. That was like the only tell. It was like, oh, it has two green eyehole monsters. That means it shoots like like poisonous slime. Okay, I need to make sure I, I you know it, it changes your strategy on how you approach yeah so this this character was like i don't know i just i was obsessed with the idea of these eye hole you know the, the whole eye hole thing <laughs> i like that that's the starting line of just like <laughs> i just like the idea of eyeballs missing and other things inside of there yeah and that being like some sort of symbiotic relationship between the character and these little creatures it plugs in and that those little creatures giving the character some kind of, you know, upgrade or special abilities or what, you know what I mean? Like that kind of like that whole thing. Um, but the, the thing that was sort of like became tro- like the thing that really became what Trover is or what really like got me going in that direction was when I got, um, my first, uh, like seated VR headset, which was essentially just a, a gear VR. It was like just a, a phone. I had like a, a Samsung whatever model, you know, in a Gear VR headset with a, a Bluetooth gamepad. Mm-hmm. And I started downloading all these other games. And it was, you know, three degrees on the headset, but I wasn't paying attention to that so much as just, okay, so what is, what's out there in the seated VR space? Because I've been so entrenched in, entrenched in room scale. And so I, I, I must have played 50 different things, took a ton of notes, and just picked up like, okay, this mechanic is really, really cool from this game, you know, whatever. I can't even remember some of the games, but... <clears throat> like what what were the games that I had the most fun and what were the games that I spent the most time in? Like what were the most like hooky, sticky, like like VR experiences for seated with a gamepad? And and by and large they were third person experiences. Like mm-hmm. every game where I was controlling another character was really compelling and I spent a lot of time in it. There's a game called Hero Bound. I do remember that one. Hero Bound is sort of like a, a Zelda kind of game. It's 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 really simple, basic, you know, third person. And you're a disembodied, like, they're using VR very much as a new new sort of TV. There's no real, like, you're just a floating observer controlling a little 
you know, Zelda-esque character kind of going through this this very well-designed, uh, like, game, like Zelda video game, style game mm-hmm. in VR. And it was really, really compelling. And that's when I started putting all these pieces together of all of these different things and then just a bunch of new ideas that I had had in my head of sort of like a first person, third person. I always knew I wanted you to be there. When you put the headset on, like, you're with... It's not a disembodied head. Like the characters are going to be talking to you. You're going to be present. You're going to be a part of the story. I always knew that from day one because that was something I felt was missing across the board in VR. It was a lot of cool tech stuff and a lot of really good gameplay stuff, but there wasn't a lot of personality or IP or character, you know, moments. That th- there were a few here and there, but nothing like really like to the level that I wanted to see. <clears throat> so I knew that would be a big component. Realized that third person control was sort of the thing that was the most compelling for me. And then obviously, like Astro, like we're 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 headlong into development on Trover, and Astrobot demo comes out, and we're like, this is fucking amazing. Like we're playing it, and we're just like, yeah, this is like this is this is the best. Like it, it, we just knew, like okay, we're ma- we're making the right thing. Like we're we're doing the right thing. Because if if Astrobot, like if we had played that and been like, oh shit, I don't know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It but gave it, was you, so it gave good. you confidence in your design. Yeah, I mean, we were just all excited, and we're lo- and we're looking at things that they did, like okay, like the little lights that come out of the robot's feet, you know, to help with pers- like depth, you know, like to make a jump, like little like little polish things that they did, like things that we sort of were like, oh, that's Trover needs to have some kind of like thing coming out of his feet, because like you know, d- d- like that. But <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, we we uh, you know, the, 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 it it was it was it was a lot of like me being a fan, being a gamer, being entrenched in the medium, playing games, like studying them, what makes them good. A lot of that went into the early days of, of the, like the found foundational kind of scaffolding for what became Trover. Mm. And I mean, I truthfully, if you talk to Tanya or anyone who's been with us from the very beginning, they will tell you that the stuff that like on paper, like all the ideas, like usually game design, I've learned, I've been told many times that You'll change, you'll pivot, you'll you'll throw a bunch of shit out multiple times. Like you're trying to find it. It started out as a tower defense game, and now it's like Dead Cells. Started out as a tower defense. Like now it's a now it's a full on like a Metroidvania with like you know uh, a roguelike, you know whatever. It's just it's insane, right? Yeah. So our game our game really never changed. It was always like the warp nodes, the <clears throat> like all of those core systems. Like never they all worked. And I think it's because I fucking literally s- sat and played hours and hours and hours of other games, and I imagined, you know, okay, if I took this lerping system, if I took this, like, this amount of degrees of rotation, because, you know, there's all kinds of weird shit, the speed of which you rotate. the bl- Instead of blink rotate, I want some con- some con- some contextual, like, I want to f- kind of feel that I rotated, but not too slow because you get sick, and all of that kind of shit, but then also just game game design stuff. <clears throat> and uh, just you know, spend a lot of time with it and on, on the on the page because I'm not I'm not an, an engineer or a programmer. I couldn't like pop open Unity or even Unreal and be like, let me just build this real quick and test it and see. Yeah. So you know, so but anyways, but but that was the big thing was like, well, let's test this. Shit. That was step one. And then you know, I was fully aware that it might fall on its face at any point. You know, once we get it fully realized, oh, this isn't fun. Or oh this you know what I mean all the typical game development stuff that I'm 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 all I'm new to, um, but it ultimately just kind of kept moving. It was work it, like things would click in place. We would dial, we tweak, and it would work. And then yeah, it was just it was very weird. And then we just kept building you know on top of that foundation. You know all mm-hmm. of the characters, the moments, the story. Gotcha. Uh, well, so I don't know if that was where I don't know how we got, if that what, was your question. Or that not. actually kind of it, lead, it does lead into a question I, I actually had written down was like what what is your day to day because you're not a programmer right or you're you're doing a lot of art I imagine and you're writing the story but and yeah. then and in terms of like what you're doing for the design is that you're just like giving people ideas and then play, playing versions of it and giving feedback. I mean, it's changed. I mean, in the beginning, it was uh, way more, um, you know way more focused on the the moment to moment like design stuff uh now it's 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 a lot it's still there's a lot of it's like i'm the creative director so it's like any new ip any i'm always coming with like crazy i, I got another crazy idea for i mean shit that i can't talk about like you know yeah there's a lot of stuff that we can't talk about that i'm busy with on trover you know as we got towards the end of it um you know a, a lot of recording a lot of 
rewriting, a lot of, um, you know, re-recording, playing the game top to bottom, building, you know, giant Google Docs or whatever of notes, you know, that, that are everything from, oh, I found a bug to, oh, there should be a puff of air between this line and this line, like really stupid stuff like that, literally. Um, uh, but we have such a talented, amazing team. I mean, it's, it's, it, that's kind of the dream, right, on any project is you want to have, you want to be working with really great people that you can just delegate. So, so at this point on Trover, it's like, hey, will you take a look at this stuff mm-hmm. and see what you think? And then I weigh in and, and I'll steer things creatively by sort of, you know, uh, delegating and sort of just giving notes and weighing in. I don't know. I just watched a documentary with Jim Henson making the Dark Crystal, and it was very fucking weird because I was like, as a kid, I remember watching that documentary and going, "Oh my God, Jim Henson's a fucking god. I want to be like him," you know. And then I watched it recently, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm literally doing the same shit that he's doing in this documentary I watched as a kid. It's fucking insane. Like, holy shit. He's just like, look, all these talented people around him. Like, here, look at this. What do you think of this? Like, look at all this amazing shit we, we made. Pick the one you like, you know? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I kind of think this is cool for the, you know, and he's, he's pouring out all this creative energy into them, and they're like reciprocating it back. It's just fucking crazy. So that's kind of what I do, like, in, 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 on my best days, you know? Yeah. I mean, were you, as, as someone who's not a game designer originally, uh, but working with game designers, did you ever just get like a flat out no? You are a crazy person. That's not going to work. <laughs> like, um, or did you, you keep know, it pretty yeah, grounded I, that, throughout my my whole life? Right? Yeah. But like, I think um, this one was different because I really like brought I brought it. Like I brought I like I could hand you the document at, at that at that E three I was talking about, and you could look at it and see. And I and I and I basically paid like people like artists I knew. I, I basically freelance paid them to to get me some cool concept art. I put a bunch of my concept art that you know I'm not the best artist in the world, but like you know I I my my sketchbook was filled with it. So I was putting my art in, and then wherever I could get somebody who was really good to replace one of my pieces, I would do it. And so I had this really good little like mini game design document with me that really like told the story and explained the game design. And I mean there really wasn't much that needed to be um, explained, you know, after you kind of flip through it, you really got, okay, I understand what this is. Beginning, middle, end, uh, characters, game design, flow, you know, um, all that stuff, like how, how the game works, you know, concept art, maps, like everything. Yeah. So, so I think it was hard not to take me seriously at that point. But, dude, I mean, yeah, if I had tried to go pitch a game... I mean, you know, I've I've gone in and pitched shows, and they're like, "This fucking guy," you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's 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 easy to 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 not take people seriously. I I, I it's hard, man, because like there's so much, there's so little follow through. I think in the world that <clears throat> you need to know someone's going to follow through. And that's 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 hard to find. I think. But, yeah. So the advice is to just ha- come in with a big ass notebook. Just well, no, like like <laughs> right. ha- have your big ass notebooks, but then take those and distill those down to a really digestible, you know, five to 10 page packet. Gotcha. That staple in the corner. It looks pretty. It's got, you know, whatever, but <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, but really the, the most important thing is, is to just like finish what you start if you can and, and try not to, my, my big thing I tell people, I see it all the time. They're like, you know, I'm writing a, I'm writing a um, 700 page novel. I'm like, listen, start with like a, five page story like start with start like give yourself the lowest bar you know that that you can creatively and 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 make that your your goal and just a bunch of mini victories before you get to the 700 page thing that you're gonna you know like yeah i don't know but that's that's a total sidebar of like you know what do you tell people who want yeah no i think that's interesting though um so the uh making trover overall just to kind of sum it up like was it harder than you thought it would be or was it about what you expected Um, it was there were things about it that were harder like scoping you know unexpected like you know obviously we have a budget and a schedule we have to be realistic about that and the very first draft of the story had a lot more twists and turns and kind of was literally i mean what we realized not too far in development we realized like okay if we made this game exactly as written we're talking you know 
this is a 30 to 40 hour game right here. And I mean, and it became very apparent once we got the, the whole first level blocked in and how long it took to get through that first level. It was like, yeah, I need to go back and, and, and look at the script and find some cuts, you know, mm. that stuff was hard because I had fallen in love with it. You know, I'd like fallen in love with the story just at exactly as it was and all these funny moments and beats that I was like, Oh, but they're so crazy. They're so cool. But it was like, you know, that that's, that's stuff that, you know, that's where art compromise and art come together to create something that's, you know, it's like, I don't know, like J Jodorowsky's Dune. It's like, he, you know, have you ever seen that documentary? I'm familiar like, with that. I haven't watched it though. It's like, you know, or, or like, or what's his name trying to make, I think he finally finished it. Don Quixote. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Terry Gilliam for like yeah. the last, God only knows how many years. Yeah, Lost in La Mancha, that documentary, right, about him yeah, just all one. falling yeah. apart in his, in his well, hands. Well, I guess those are, those are the worst case examples where, where, where just the realities come in and destroy the art, you know? Yeah. But, but in most cases, it's a nice kind of like meeting in the middle where it's like, okay, if you could have exactly what you wanted, uh, it would be different. But these realities came in and tempered that and actually made it better, like mm -hmm. in, in a weird way. Yeah, um, I, th I think the game is better for those scoping meetings. Uh, usually that's the case, you know. Um, but yeah, so that was always difficult. Like, okay, I got to go back and cut like a whole level and figure out how to get this story information into other parts of the game. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, but, th but then that shit just became fun. The, 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 the more we realized like, okay, we're going to be real loose with the, with the moment to moment stuff. <clears throat> then it was just like, okay, well, whatever. Then we can just have fun and a lot of that was happy accident stuff, like me temping a bunch of stuff and not giving a shit, and then us playing it and it working really well and like like focus playing it and people love like really liking it and story comprehension was working and we're like, well, shit, if people are tracking the story and it's and it's it's making us laugh really hard, we've got a thousand other fires to put out. Let's just leave this shit alone and keep moving, you know. So then th there I am yet yet again doing another character's voice in this game that I wasn't originally planning to do yeah but it's like you know just blocking shit in and, and temping a bunch of characters and then and then later on it's like well this stuff is really funny and it's working and part of the magic was how i didn't none of us gave a shit because we knew we were going to replace it later you know what i mean and then <laughs> yeah. and then it's like well no now that's like that's the tone that's the game and then we just leaned into that like hardcore for the rest of it yeah it so, has uh like i said we're not going to get into spoilers or anything but i will say the game has a very improvisational style that is I mean that's not something you attach to video games, right? Like improv is not a thing in a video game, you know? No, not at all. And I mean that's definitely something I wanted to do going into games. Like I like if you see it in accounting, you know, like w the game I did with William Pugh and 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 Dom, like like, the, like over at Crows. So it's like you know that that was very much like that's that's always going to be the way, like improv and just weird long rambling opt in dialogue moments and stuff like that. But um. But I didn't think we would get this loose, you know. But but I but I love it. I love that we did. I just love I love taking a medium that takes so many you know people hours to like fucking pour over and and build and like animate and taking a medium that's so time intensive and blood sweat and tears intensive and then just not giving a f about like you know if the dialogue is if there's stutters in it or if it's like com a complete like outtake. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. like in cartoons, it, 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 I was obsessed with it just doing it in cartoons. Like always. It was like the idea of sitting there and hand animating a fucking character who's stuttering and can't get a sentence out that's clearly an outtake. Or, a, or like my friend Abed would, I used to get him to yell a lot and he, and it would cause him to start coughing really bad. And he didn't realize that I was, do, I was doing it on purpose to get him to cough because I wanted takes of him coughing and just like break, like totally like real, like he's breaking character and he's just hacking a lung up. And I would use all that shit. You know, I would take that audio and use it every take. I was like, like looking for Abed coughing in the middle of a line, and and then and just like gasping and like. Luckily, he he's he. I didn't hurt him, but uh, <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. He's 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 living he's living his best life. But but yeah, so that kind of stuff is. I love that stuff, and I I, I I'm always surprised, and I love to see it in games myself. So yeah. Uh, so, uh, what do you want players to take away from Trover? Like, do you want, when people introduce you now, following Trover, do you want to be like the Trover guy, or are you just, are you going to be oh. co-creative Rick and Morty like for the rest of your life? And there's I mean, no I don't know. I, I, I just, just a, just a person, you know, just a human being, create content creator, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's that's a tough question because that gets into like, 
you know, who, who am I? What are we really? What are we even, you know, like, I think we're just, just a weird speck of bacteria that I, 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 we're nothing like really, but, but, but I don't know, I guess, I guess, I guess, yeah, Rick and Morty co-creator and, and game person. I don't game person, know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what do you want, what do you want people to, to take away from it when they play it? I mean, humor, right? is like a big oh, part yeah, of it. Yeah. No, I want, I want people to take, I want my, my, what makes me happy is some, is hearing that like, Hey, your game got me through a tough thing. Mm. Like I was really upset. I was heartbreak broken over a relationship or I was going through a tough patch and your game really cheered me up. It made me happy. And I like, you know, that, that's, that's the best stuff you could ever hear from anybody. And I, and I get that a lot for, for Rick and Morty and like Dan as well, like has heard that, you know, it's like, Hey, your, your show got me through a tough thing. And there's so many shows like that for me or games, you know, a lot of games I've just like lost myself in through a tough patch people who are struggling with struggling with depression like hey your game made me fucking forget about the sadness that kind of is this baseline through my life for you know every every moment i was in your game i was laughing and not thinking about that shit. so that's that's the goal it's an escape really right i yeah. mean i i don't i don't anticipate any sort of huge epiphanies to come to anybody from our game or any you know it's it's more just like yeah man i had a lot of fun and i laughed really hard and it made me feel it made me forget about my <clears throat> hardships you know as a human being yeah on this whole planet that's dying and we're all fighting with each other <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird time but so yeah just put that headset on and or or play it on your tv and just escape yeah. you know gotcha uh well just a good final question uh that i just like to ask uh it's like what what is your favorite video game of all time just period what was the the game that <clears throat> meant everything to you i mean the the, the first before you even finish the sentence, the first game that jumped into my head was Met is Metroid. Mm. I, I have to original say, like, NES Metroid. Yeah, the original. I mean, obviously the the way they've built on those original systems with all of the subsequent, you know, two D or two point five D, you know, side scrolling versions of that game, they're all just better. The the they're all just incredible. The one one after the next is amazing, and I'm so happy we got a three DS Metroid. I was so worried. We were like, oh, we're going to go through a whole life cycle of a fucking three-dimensional fucking 3D handheld, handheld, you know, system from Nintendo without a fucking single Metroid game. Motherfucker. Not even a remake. And then they finally gave us one. Like, here's your remake. But it's amazing. I'm like, dude, why didn't we get this four or five years ago? And why not, like, three sequels? Yeah. In a I mean, like, dude, that game is, like... So, yeah, that's, like, the first one. But then I'd say the second one would probably be Grand Theft Auto 3. And that's because my whole life, I'd play like Rad Racer or Burnout or, or so not Burnout, Outrun, all these like racing games, you know, like like um, Rad, uh, what's the fucking Road Rash, you know, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> and always, always I would be thinking, man, I wish I could drive to those weird mountains, you know, whatever the stupid skybox thing. I wish I could just go to the right, just go off the road and go where the fuck I want to go. Or I'd be playing um, some other game and I'd be like, man, I wish I could just steal that person's car you know or just all this stuff you're playing video games and you're sort of projecting these like the ultimate game would be if i could do this this and this <clears throat> and then gta comes out and they're like yeah here it is here's your game that you've been dreaming about your whole life it, and it's exactly like you know yeah i know you you can do all that shit. here yeah. it is have fun and so that game that game was just like and i and i was aware of it because I'd, I'd played um their first two i'd played the top down ones and i was just like you know for hours and hours just playing those top down ones on my pc I'd, I'd, I'd put in like, like, <clears throat> like hole or like Nirvana or whatever. Like put in my own music and just listen and play that fucking game for hours. And uh, so when I read, I read I, uh, articles about it coming out, and just I could tell you could just they were they knew what they had, man. Like if you read those old articles of them before the game came out, <clears throat> there's a confidence in in them. They they knew like oh we we know we know what we've got. Like it's <laughs> it's gonna fucking blow your mind. Like they knew like there was just this like. You just knew it was going to be something special. So when that game, when I got that game, it just blew my mind. Oh, I mean, sure. there's so many though. Like I'm going way back to like what what are like pivotal pivotal yeah. gaming moments in my life. Um, and those two are for sure. I mean, Mario 64 was another one that blew my mind, but like probably not as much as GTA 3. I think GTA 3 really was just like holy shit. 
And then it was like, why? What's what's wrong with all everyone else? Like, why is everyone <laughs> like what are what what are all the other devs doing right now? Yeah. And then you made um, a game, and you realized how difficult it is to make an open hard. world game. It's it's fucking hard, dude. Yeah. No, it's like okay, got it. Yeah, not easy. <laughs> uh, it is hard, man. And those guys had two two in the can, you know, top down. Like they 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 did it right. Like they dipped their toes in the water in a way that was like again like setting the bar not too high like they weren't going to go hey our first game's going to be a giant 3d open world f-ing game we've never made one before let's go it's like no they've made two open world games but they were you know obviously they were dipping their toe into a different kind of engine and stuff but whatever like it's crazy man like it is hard to make a game man it's hard there's a <laughs> lot of like compromise and there's a lot of but honestly if you look at compromise as as uh, creative offers like how can we take this and get creative like this is a this is a compromise we have to make. How can we take this and turn it into a joke, into a funny moment, into, um, you know, whatever it is. Like, if you if you approach compromise that way, then then it's never a bad thing. You know, it's always something fun. And, and it's always an offer for either a fun game moment or, or a fun comedy moment. Gotcha. gotcha. Well, thanks so much, Justin. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about Squanch and Trover and everything. And, um... That was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us.